A new tool has just been released for working with ESP-based microcontrollers. It's unlike anything else I'm aware of, and it can be working with ESP boards and custom firmware much easier, not only for developers, but for end users. Let's dive in and take a look. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. I was actually prepared to release a different video today, but I ran across a news article about this new ESP tool that was available. I decided to take a look and was so impressed, I decided to hold off on the other video and make a quick overview of this new tool. ESP Connect is a new tool that was just released a few days ago. It runs completely locally, directly in your browser with no apps to install or configure. I do note that right now it does require a recent Chromium-based browser like Chrome or Edge, but you just go to the ESP Connect site, and I'll leave links down in the video description, and you'll be prompted to connect your ESP. In my example, I'll be using a couple of ESP32s, but it works with ESP8266 as well. And here's the first way this tool can be really handy. A bit ago, I did a video comparing two cheap yellow display clones. In that video, I spent quite a bit of time and had to use multiple tools just trying to identify the specifics of the ESP32 chip since it was rebranded and apparently misidentified in the product listing. Let's see what this new tool can tell me about the ESP. I'll connect my cheap yellow display to the PC via USB cable, and now I can click the connect button and I should see the COM port where I just connected my device. So I will go ahead and click connect. What it's going to do in this case is actually going to go out and read all the information off the ESP device. Now don't worry, it's not making any changes to the ESP at this point. But here I can see all the details about the ESP chip. It tells me how much flash is available, the types of capabilities built into the chip. It even tells me the exact chip variant that I'm using and the revision number. And what can also be helpful, sometimes it tells me the actual USB chip that is being used for the USB to serial and that will vary some from different ESP boards. It tells me my number of cores and my maximum frequency. So I could have gotten everything I needed for that cheap yellow display right from this one screen. And if you are connected to Wi-Fi or Ethernet, it will also show you the MAC address. But there are a ton of other tools and features that can be used besides just reading the chip info. Some, like the partition layout, might only be useful for more advanced users, but it provides very helpful information like the size and offset of each partition. And if you're at all familiar with doing over-the-air or OTA updates, two app partitions are used, and the Apps tab will actually show you which app partition is actually active and in use. But to me, one of the best features is the ability to upload, download, delete, or even view files stored in SPIFs. Now, SPIFs is a special partition where you can upload raw files. This might be things like audio files, images, fonts, or even HTML files. And this can be done with other tools like the Arduino IDE, but you have to install ESP board support, download and install an add-on for uploading files to SPIFs, and even then the process isn't that straightforward, especially for those that might not have experience with the Arduino IDE. Not so with this tool. Now note that there are actually three different SPIF tools depending on how the original firmware, if any, formatted SPIFs, but ESP Connect is able to read that information and only enable the proper option. In this case, just the standard SPIFs. Here you can read, backup, restore, or even format SPIFs without impacting the actual application. What's even better, the bottom section shows you the available SPIF space and allows you to upload files directly from the browser. For example, let's say my application is going to have a small web interface. Instead of including all the HTML files in the application itself, I can actually directly upload each of these files to SPIFs. But what is even more handy is the ability to view files or delete files that are already in SPIFs. For this example, I'm going to switch to a different ESP32. This one is the primary controller for my Matrix Clock 32 project. For this project, a configuration file is created and written to SPIFs and then read and used by the application, but it does not provide any way to actually view the contents of this file should you have issues. So now I'll go ahead and I'll disconnect from the cheap yellow display. I will unplug that ESP32 and plug in my one from my Matrix Clock, and I will reconnect to that ESP32. And once again, I can see all of the information about the ESP32 itself, 
but I can also take a look at the SPIFs and see that configuration file. Now do note that this particular firmware has formatted SPIFs as little FS and ESP Connect is able to detect that and highlight that as the option. So I'll go ahead and click into this, it'll read that, and there's my configuration file. Now what's more, I can actually use the little eye over here and view the contents of that configuration file right here on the screen. I also have the option to download it, which means I could actually download this configuration file, make local changes, and then upload it back to SPIFS. This is great not only for developers, but also for end users where uploading files to SPIFS is part of the installation process. This is much easier, especially for end users, than trying to provide instructions for how to use something like the Arduino IDE or even ESP tool. But speaking of flashing firmware, ESP Connect also has a complete set of flashing tools. Here I can actually back up and even erase the current flash. So this is great if you want to make a copy of the current firmware before applying new firmware. But here is the option to flash firmware. And again, with all sorts of options to change the partition table if needed. Finally, there's even an option to look at actual registers in your ESP32 or ESP8266 and to check the flash integrity. There's also a serial monitor just like it's built into the Arduino IDE that allows you to see output from your ESP32 or even send commands via serial if the firmware supports it. There's a log of ESP Connect itself, which can be helpful to troubleshoot if you have issues. And finally, the developer actually makes their own YouTube tutorial available if you need additional information. The entire project is open source and available on GitHub, so you can be sure nothing sneaky is going on in the background. But while I haven't investigated it yet, I suspect that this app could probably be self-hosted in something like a VM as well. Now the project is relatively new, only being released four days ago, so there may still be a few bugs to shake out, but it also means that this tool is likely just to get better in the future. This new tool will be a game changer for me, not only during development, but as a new way to distribute and install my applications for end users, especially if SPIF's file uploads are required as part of that install. And if, like me, you find this tool useful, please consider buying the developer a cup of coffee or two. This helps assure continued support and development of the application. So that's a quick overview of this new tool for working with ESP-based microcontrollers. I'll release the video I was planning on releasing today soon, but until then, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.